Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I want to take you through one of my favorite thrift flips. This is a really easy one based on something that you can find at any thrift store. A big men's v-neck sweater like this that you can find literally at any thrift store anywhere or maybe even in your husband's or your dad's closet. I like to find the ones with no logo on it, no insignia. So this is the kind of sweater I'm talking about. It's big and soft, it's super cozy. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with a sweater like this. Like, I actually feel pretty cozy in it, but I probably wouldn't wear this to work, right? I probably wouldn't wear this out to dinner. Right now, it's perfect for around the house. I feel totally cozy and it's nice. But I'm gonna turn this into a much more flattering wrap style sweater. You want a sweater that's big enough where you could take it from the halfway mark. You could take that halfway mark and you'd be able to stretch it across to the other side seam. So make sure your sweater is big enough that you can do that. Halfway can go over to the side. Good? Then you're golden. So let me show you what I'm going to do. If you are thrifting this sweater, you're going to want to wash it before you work with it. So take a look at the label. This one is 100% cotton and it's machine washable. If you find a good wool sweater, it might be a washable wool, in which case you're safe to just put it right in the washing machine. But if it's not washable, like check your label, you might need to wash it by hand and then lay it flat to dry. If you're ready, grab your sweater, grab your scissors, and let's do it. I actually want to preserve this band, so I'm gonna cut that off first. If I'm gonna be sewing it on, I wanna leave a little bit of seam allowance above there. I'm not gonna cut it right on that line, I'm gonna cut it a little bit above so that I leave some seam allowance so that I can sew it back on. So I'll cut right there. I'm just going to cut through one layer at a time just so I can make sure that I'm giving myself that good seam allowance all the way around. It's basically like a finger width above the line of where the ribbing changes to the regular knit. Good. Okay, so there's the whole bottom ribbing. I'll just put that aside for now. I'm going to put that back on later. So now I'm going to cut right down the center front from that V, right through that V, and I'm just going to follow one line of the knit all the way down to the bottom. So you can see the lines of the knit, even though this is a fairly fine knit, I can still follow one line of knit all the way down. And if you can't quite see it, then you might be better to draw a line with wax or chalk. Good. So I've cut right down the center, and honestly that edge is just going to roll to the inside and that's going to be fine. I don't necessarily even have to serge that edge. Nothing comes off when you cut a knit vertically. It's not going to run from a vertical cut. It's the horizontal cut off the bottom that I could pull a thread, so I will end up serging it across the bottom or zigzag if you prefer. Good, so now I can put this back on and wrap it around and see how I want it to sit on me. When I put it back on, I'm going to do some debating about this giant armhole if I want to make that smaller. Probably. When I did this one, the armhole is really deep. I didn't change the armhole at all, but it's sitting nicely and draping nicely. So that armhole didn't bother me. So I didn't change that at all. I could, though, lift that armhole up. Now, the gray one, let's look at how that armhole is looking. When I wrap it, watch what happens to the armhole. What I'm not liking is where the seam is coming here, right? It's just coming too forward onto the bust line and I don't, I don't really love that. See how it's stretching funny across here. So if your sweater is wrapping nicely at the armhole and you're comfortable with it, it even if it's still a deep armhole, you know, if you push the sleeves up, that can look kind of nice. For this one, I just don't like how it's pulling across the bust. I kind of want to put a dart right here, but when you're working with a knit, there's a few nice tricks you can do where you don't actually sew a dart, but you're able to ease in that extra fabric. So I'm going to show you that. This is a cotton sweater, as I said, but if you're working with wool, it eases in even nicer. But I think I'll be able to get the cotton to ease in there. But that does mean that I'm going to have to open up the armhole from this part where I want to put the dart and open up around the whole top of the armhole. So I'm going to unpick that shoulder seam, play around, and I'll show you the process. When you're unpicking a sweater, you will find that there is a little tiny chain stitch in here. These loops might just start to run. Oh, look at that. Here we go. So once I found the right spot, that loop is just going to run. So you can undo the chain stitch, but it takes a long time to find that little thread. And it's just 
you know, you're only saving that eighth of an inch of seam allowance, so it's not worth it. So I'm just going to cut off that little tiny seam just around the top half of the sleeve. You can see right here is where I'd want the dart. I'm going to pin that dart in place, but I'm not going to sew a dart there. Generally with knits, you don't, you shouldn't have a dart. It should stretch or drape around the body, not, not have a dart in it. So, but I'm going to be able to ease that out. And then the sleeve, I think I do want to pick up that shoulder seam since I have it open. And this is my tailor's wax. This makes a nice line. It works great on cotton and wool, um, but it does leave a stain on synthetics. So just be careful of that. Okay. All right, so that would be good for the shoulder seam, I think. Okay, I'm gonna pin the wrap in place too, so that I can decide what to do down here. There is quite a bit of fabric down there that maybe I wanna get rid of. So that would be coming in there. So I'll be taking out some of that sleeve. That'll be okay. If that sleeve came up to the line. That would just be so much nicer, wouldn't it? Yeah. And that'll be nice. Okay. Let me show you how to do that. So this is what we're looking at. There's the dart that I want to remove or ease in. Here's how much I'm going to be cutting off that shoulder. The sleeve, I'm not going to actually cut off any. It's going to just sew to the new armhole. And because of that dart coming out, it's going to fit nicely. And then this marking over here is where I'm going to be taking in that whole sleeve and side seam. So I'm gonna cut that first. So I wanna put both sides together there. So I'm gonna pin the shoulder seams together and I'm gonna to have to smooth that line out a bit when I go to cut, but essentially that's where I'm gonna be cutting. Bring my edges together. And then this line will just taper off into that dart. I'm going to be cutting off, leaving seam allowance just outside that line and then tapering off right into the dart. While I've got it together, I will mark the same dart on the other side. So I'll put one pin at the beginning. I'm just marking on the opposite side, pins in about the same spot for that dart. Bring those back together. That's where I want my dart to be. Good. Okay. So if you have one of these tailor's hands, that this would be a good time to use it. I'm gonna put it underneath where I want the dart to sit. Where the point of the dart is, I want it smooth on the tailor's hand. And then I'm gonna stick a pin here, about an inch or so past the dart, and one about an inch or so before the dart. And the point stays flat. Okay, on a wool, you'd be able to just shrink this all in. On a cotton, it's a little trickier. I might have to sort of spread it out a little more. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna go in with my iron and try to steam this all in. So I've got the iron on cotton and full steam, lots of water, lots of steam. Can you see how that's working? It is shrinking that in and it's creating that three-dimensional shape over the bust line, but letting me take it out of the armhole. Good, so now you can let that cool. Don't move it off the tailor's ham until it's nice and cool. What I can even do now is with my needle and thread, I'm gonna sew a basting stitch in here and kind of gather it in a little bit and then give it one final steam. Awesome, that's beautiful. So you don't want any puckers in there. You wanna flatten it out on this three-dimensional shape. So I've shrunk in that area. Oh, the sleeve should fit in here now. I made the armhole so much smaller by steaming out that area here but lifted it up on the shoulder and so it just worked out now the sleeve is just fitting back in there perfectly so I'll pin both sides and then I'm gonna machine baste that and try it on more, one more time and make sure I'm happy with how that's sitting so I've got that steamed in 
edge on the bottom and I just want to make sure like I'm feeling at the top here that I don't feel any puckers I don't want any puckers there at all and then now I want to blend back into the tiny little seam allowance that was there originally okay one more thing I'm gonna do before I try it on again and that's take in the side seam so it's just got too much fabric under the arm here and then under the arm and down towards the hip this is where I want to kind of taper out a little higher than I normally would okay because of the way we're going to be wrapping it to make them the same I can just put my right sleeve on top of my left and just kind of get those lines looking the same for the wrap women wrap right over left this is the left side so I'm going to be tucking the right side into it so just on this left side only I need to open up that seam just the bottom like six inches or so I'm going to use a regular straight stitch to just sew on my wax line and I want to really blend nicely into that sleeve I'm going to be right at that original tiny seam allowance and then just follow my line blend back out into that original seam allowance so I have it on inside out now, which is always good when you're trying to do some taking in because you want to be able to manipulate that side seam. So I've got it in inside out. It's going to wrap over like this. Isn't that shoulder so much better? Oh my gosh, I love that. That's so nice. And then right here, it's just going to be draping nicely. I'm happy with that, how it's going to be over the bust line. Looking good though. So I'm going to trim off that extra, serge the side seam. Mm -hmm. I guess I will serge the armhole first. So I'm going to go around the armhole and again as always if you don't have a serger that's okay. You can zigzag, you could even bind this with a ribbon. Last little press over where I eased it in. Nice. Oh yeah that's good. So. This is now right side out, but I still haven't trimmed off under the arm, so it might be a bit bunchy under there, but looking good. So I want to get this, the part that I opened up, like the bottom six inches or so that I opened up, I'm going to be sewing the bottom of the right side into the left. So that side seam, it does come a little bit forward, but it kind of, it looks nice that way. I like it. You like it? Good. Okay, not every serger likes to trim off that much. So I'm going to cut that with scissors first. This is the side seam going up under the arm. I'll just trim off that extra because my serger just might not enjoy taking off that much fabric. So now this is the sweater's inside out. Women wrap right over left. That means that this being inside out, the left is going to be on top. Right? This is still the center of my sweater. I'm bringing the center over to that edge and just the bottom like six inches or so I'm going to catch in when I serge that side seam. Now on this side I've got the other center front edge here and it's going into that bottom six inches or so of this side seam that I opened up. Good so those three edges now together and that's going to get caught into this seam. Now I don't like to bring pins to the serger so I'm going to baste that closed first and then we'll serge these edges together. This one in the center I'm just going to let it roll in and escape away there. You know that's not going to be a finished edge it's going to roll just to the center so that'll be fine. And then on this side just need to get these edges attached for just that bottom six inches or so. I took out a good amount there, like a good inch and a half from here, and so I love the sleeve a lot more. It's sitting nice. I love the shoulder so much better. It's so nice. And it's draping nicely. Oh, I'm really excited. I just love it. There's one little kind of bubble here that I thought I had smoothed out, but I'm gonna get that. It's a little pin there to keep that down. So I'll take that in from the inside, right? But look at that, like, that's really nice, isn't it? It's so good. I think it's, it still has the exact same, like cozy, cottony, soft feeling that it did before, but now it's just a lot more feminine, a lot more flattering. So 
I feel good in it. I would wear this to work. I would wear this out for dinner. I could put this with a skirt or even like a leather pants. I could do a lot of different things with this. So now my last thing to do is decide if I want to take anything off the length before I put the band back on or do I even want to put the band back on? Do I want to just turn a hem? When you turn a hem on a sweater, mm, varying degrees of success there, right? So I think I will put the band back on. It's going to be extra big, so I'm going to take some of that off. So I need to take that much off the band. So that'll be back on there, and that'll be a nice finish on the bottom. So I just have this. The sleeves are extra long, for sure. But I just like to push them up. I'm not going to really bother with anything there. And that front edge, if I unroll it, you'll see that that's not a finished edge, but it just rolls to the inside and I think it's just fine. I like it. I like the softness of it. I don't want to see a line of stitching there. I just like that it's soft and wraps. And Before I put the band on, I'm going to serge my side seams that didn't get done yet. So I've cut the band down to where I want it to be. This is a finished edge and you don't want to have a chain of thread here that I need to trim off and it's going to unravel or I need to tie it off in a knot or anything fussy like that. So here's a trick. It's a little bit different from the trick that I showed in the t-shirt resizing video, um, but it's just as good and just as handy for a finished edge. So I'm going to start with just about two stitches here. Okay, that'll do. Then I'm going to lift up and pull that chain of thread forward right underneath my presser foot and down and now I'm going to surge that chain right into my seam. There. Isn't that nice? Then you've got no thread sticking out there. It's just a perfectly finished edge. Beautiful, right? Okay. Okay, to put the band back on, I'm just laying this down flat. Now, as I say, the two original side seams have moved in because we wrapped the front. So if I center those, then that's where I want the side seams of the band to sit. I'm going to take the raw edge of the band and put that seam of the band to the raw edge of the sweater so they are right sides together. Put the pin there. Right. The opposite seam to the opposite um, halfway point. Good. Okay. Kind of stretch that together so the edges come together. Now in that front I've got two edges. I want to unroll them and get those to the center of the band. So just pin that band evenly around, making sure your edges all stay together. Knits like to roll. And can you see here I've got I've got probably a little bit more seam allowance than I need. Can you see where the ribbing starts? So I want my serging to come there, so I will be cutting off a little bit all the way around. I am going to break my rule about no pins at the serger. Let's just do it. I'm going to start at the side seam here. Make sure my edges are unrolled and together. There are two little lines here on my presser foot that line up with the needle. So I know I need to have that left line, that left little notch right along where the ribbing starts. Unroll as you go. Last thing I need to do is pull out any of that red thread that was still in there. Okay, it's done. I've got the bottom band back on. It's got that exact same cozy feeling that it did before. It's got that just casual but feminine look to it. The fit is just easy, comfortable, nothing fussy, nothing fancy, just really soft and feminine. If you didn't have to mess around with the armhole, then it's really fast. Um, but I think it was worthwhile for me to do that because I do like that so much better now. But that part's up to you. So thanks so much for joining me today. That was really fun. I was glad to have you along for the ride. And if you like that one, hit that subscribe button for me, please. It helps me so much. I really do appreciate it. My name is Catherine, and I can't wait to sew with you again. Take care.